Hi there, it's Nicole from my Handmade Holiday 2015 series, and today I have some vellum and reindeer goodie bags. This is kind of a take on the goodie bags I created last year using this Lawn Fawn goodie bag die. But this year I wanted to kind of duplicate or recreate those see-through bags that you can purchase at stores. And so I decided to use some vellum with the goodie bag die to create these three bags. The first thing I did was trim down my eight and a half by 11 paper. You're gonna need two of these panels to create one goodie bag. And to do this, I to get a whole goodie bag out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, this is the best way I found to trim around it like this. Run it through the machine, and then you can grab that leftover paper, trim around it again, and run it through the machine. It's really quick and easy. So I'm gonna do this and get six of these panels. Another thing to keep in mind, if you want to create vellum goodie bags, you're gonna to wanna to use some good heavyweight vellum. This is 40 pound weight vellum, and that's just so that it's not so flimsy, so that it gives a nice um, sturdy base for the treat bag. Once I have my bags die cut, they would be cute left as is, but I decided I wanted to dress them up. I really love the look of white on white for um, on vellum. And a lot of times I like to heat emboss white embossing powder stamped images, but the thing with that is sometimes they can kind of warp. The heat from the heat tool can warp the design. So instead of that, this time I chose to use use white stays on ink with the Lawn Fawn Snowy Backdrops border die. And I'm gonna stamp that twice on the front and back panels of the goodie bag. I'm not gonna worry about the sides for this because they kind of fold in and they're so small, you're not really gonna even see that. So I'm just gonna stamp the front and back of the goodie bag with this design and it's gonna give a great kind of white on white design for these vellum goodie bags. So I'm just masking off the side panel. Before I fold up the goodie bag at all on those score lines, if you're gonna do any stamping, make sure you do it while it's still flat. It makes it so much easier. So again, just gonna stamp that a couple times with the stays on ink. You definitely want to use something like stays on or even heat embossing if you don't have stays on because of the non-porous um, surface of this paper it dries immediately and you won't have any smearing like you would with a dye or pigment ink next i'm going to go ahead and fold up all of these areas right on the score line. I'm using a Teflon bone folder to help with the scoring. I like to fold it all first before I actually start to put it together. That way I have nice creases and it's going to fold up really nicely. So go ahead and do that bottom area as well. I'll fold the other side of the goodie bag so that both sides have those nice score lines. I'm going to use a quarter inch double-sided adhesive tape to hold the bag together. So I'm gonna to need to apply that um, adhesive tape on all of those little tabs that go inside of the bag. I love the ThermaWeb double-sided adhesive tapes. It comes in several widths. I found that the quarter inch here, the, or the one-fourth inch works really well. Just pop that off. And go ahead and assemble each side of the goodie bag. So I'll assemble that one first. Go ahead and place the double-sided adhesive on the other side of the bag. Again, just snip those to fit each side. I'm also going to need a little piece for the bottom of the bag to attach one side to the other, and I will do that here in just a second. So first I'll assemble the second half of the bag together. Then I'll remove the backing paper from the other two tabs and I will put the bag together. So just peel off that backing paper. 
I found this was the nicest looking way to do it. Because the adhesive is going to be seen a little bit, because it's a nice strip like this, even though it's a vellum bag and you can see through it, it, look, it still looks nice. I don't think it's nearly as visible as another kind of adhesive would be. So I'll just squeeze the bag together a little bit to get that crease nice along each side. I'm gonna take another little piece here, put that between those two bottom panels so that they stay together as well. Once I have that bag, all, or all three bags put together, I'm gonna to set those aside while I work on the tags. I'm gonna take the mid-sized or the, the middle of the three stitched circle tag dies and I'm gonna die cut this from smooth white cardstock six times. I need six of these because I'm going to have to place them back to back. I'm doing a little Copic coloring on the stamped images on the tags and Copic markers are gonna bleed through the paper and you don't definitely don't want that on the back of the tags. So I'm going to place them back to back to make a much sturdier tag where you can't see the Copic marker that has bled through. On three of the tags, I'm going to stamp the Standing Reindeer from the Toboggan Together stamp set using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. These are such cute little images. You could stamp any critter or cute image that you want to on these tags. I'm gonna just do the same image on all three. You could mix it up and maybe even use the other reindeer or the penguins from this same stamp set if you wanna do something different on each. Next, I'm gonna take the three remaining tags and stamp the to and from from the winter tags stamp set on each of these. Again, I'm gonna use the Memento Tuxedo Black ink since I already have that out. I place the to and from on one acrylic block so I could stamp them at the same time. Then I'll stamp the holly from that stamp set as well. And then I can color this little image in and it's gonna add a nice little pop of color to the back of these gift tags. Starting with the reindeer, I am gonna color in all three of these tags exactly the same using E40, E43, and E44 as the three main colors for the reindeer. The E40 is gonna be for the lighter part of the face and the underside of the tail. And then E43 is gonna be the base color for the rest of the reindeer. And then E44 will be my darkest color to add a little shading. So I'll just pull in a little bit of this and I'm gonna color all three exactly the same. Blend out the E44 with my E43. Add a little E43 to the lightest area of the face to pull in a little bit darker color. E49 for the hooves and the antlers on the reindeer. And then a little R00 for the cheek. And then I felt like maybe the darker color blended out a little too much, so I went back in and pulled in that E44 again. Blended it out with E43. And again, I just felt like it kept blending a little too much. Um, you were, I was losing too much of the shading or the shadowing. So I did end up going back in with a little E49, which was that really dark color I used for the antlers and very lightly added touches of that near the antlers um, where the head meets the body and a few other little places there on the legs and things and blended it out. I'm gonna finish each of the reindeer tags with a red pearl gemstone. These are Doodlebug Ladybug red pearl gemstones I've had forever. This is gonna add a nice little pop of color. The gift bags are white on white, the tags are white with the cute little brown reindeer, and then I'm adding some color to the back of the tags with the red holly and then the green leaves here with R29, YG95, and 97, but I wanted to add just a punch of color to the front of the tags with those red nose, so it's gonna make them Rudolph tags, and then I'll add red tissue paper inside the bags that kind of ties it all together for that red and white theme. I'll attach the tags back to back, so one reindeer tag with one to and from tag, and that's gonna hide any of that ink that bled through from the coloring and give them a really nice finished look. 
Next I'm going to take that red tissue paper and I just trimmed my tissue paper into fourths and so I'm using a little fourth of one sheet inside each of the bags. I don't actually have a gift inside of here so it was a little tricky getting the tissue paper to look kind of decent tucked inside of the bag without any actual gift. Then I'm going to take a little of the Lawn Fawn Lawn Trimmings Red Sparkle Twine and thread that through the tags. Then I will also thread through a couple of silver jingle bells. These are going to add some um, nice texture and add a little bit of a fun festive element to the tags. Plus they jingle, which I think is super fun. These could, the little tag could even be taken off of the package after the gift has been given and maybe used as an ornament or reused if the recipient wanted to, used for something else. I'm going to tie those in place to kind of keep them secure, little knot in between the jingle bells. Then I'll take both ends and knot them together. I'm not going to leave too much of a space there going to be pretty short since it's on such a small gift bag. Trim those ends and then I'll take some chenille trim. This is from Stampin' Up! I've had it for several years. I just wanted something with some texture. I'll thread that tag on there, tie it in a bow, and that is going to finish off my vellum and reindeer goodie bags. Thanks for watching this Handmade Holiday 2015 video showcasing Lawn Fawn stamps and dies used to create these vellum goodie bags. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos you might be interested in watching on my channel. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.